Good morning. The embrace of this incapacity for marriage for the sake of the kingdom was one lived by St. Maximilian Kolbe as he gave his whole life in his ardor for our blessed mother who he so famously and consistently referred to as the Immaculate. Many of you know his story. Oh, it's, worth, it's worth retelling, it's inspiring. We all have something to learn from his heroism. So, born in 1894, Poland, Early on, a little bit of a rambunctious child, Matteo here in the first pews, illustrating that a little bit. <laughs> His mother famously told him, <laughs> what will become of you, Raymond, which was his name. And it, it, it startled him a little bit. You know, it's funny what sort of words impact us. Perhaps not at age two, but I think he was made a little older. And he, he, uh, he had a dream or a vision and Our Lady held out to him two crowns, white and red, purity, martyrdom. He said, I'll take them both. And he would. So he decides to become a conventional Franciscan, builds the largest monastery in the world charged with promoting this vision of a, the Knights of the Immaculate, this army of love and service of the Blessed Mother, and not content with like the largest army, for, largest monastery in Poland. I think I would be, I think I'd be content with the third largest monastery. Um, I think it may have been the largest in the world at the time, especially of the Franciscans. He then travels to Japan to do the same thing, builds a monastery in Nagasaki, suffers this whole time with the effects of tuberculosis, which he had contracted early in his seminary days, goes back to Poland, Nazis invade, gets sent to, of all places, Auschwitz, becomes a number among many. They're enduring persecution even as, as a follower of Christ, as a priest. But famously, a person escaped from, from his block in Auschwitz, and they were going to starve to death, a group of men, and one of them says, you know, I'm a husband and a father. Spare me. And Maximilian Kolbe steps forward and says, I'll take his place. Who are you? I'm a Catholic priest. And they accept him in exchange for this fellow. So for two weeks, he starves in this bunker, singing hymns, leading prayers, being an agent of joy in that most evil place, perhaps in the history of the world. And the heart of that darkness was light, was love, was joy. Because Max knew who he was, who he belonged to. So he, he was the last to last. And so they famously injected him with carbolic acid, killing him on August 14th, 1941. Giving everything for Jesus. I think... The temptation could be, well, that's just too much. I can't. I feel maybe I feel more like the guy who says, "Spare me." It's not, I can't do this. But in each of our lives is an invitation and an opportunity, an invitation to grow closer to Jesus and an opportunity to do that as full of awareness of how beloved and close we can be to the Blessed Mother who enabled it for him. It wasn't his own steam. She did it. He trusted her. And she did it. Let's beg. Or frankly, just look at our lives. Is Mary, 
Is her motherly influence imbuing our existence or is it marginal? Let's beg, let's consider, let's ask for the strength through this Eucharist to allow her to allow us to love her son, Jesus, with our everything. St. Maximilian Colby, pray for us.